Good day everyone, today I will demonstrate the assessment or the examination in the abdomen. The purpose of this assessment is for us to know if there are any abnormalities or defects in terms of the organs in the abdomen part of the body. This is also helpful in detecting different diseases with accordance to the abdomen part of the body. Um, good day, ma'am. I am Nurse Kate and I will be completing your assessment for today. So for today, we're going to assess and examine your abdominal part. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, so how would you like me to call you? Casey. Okay, just Casey. Um, before anything else, I would like to ask you several questions regarding your um, the status of your health right now. Uh, but before that, I will sanitize my hands first. Okay, this is to prevent... Uh, the spread of microorganisms, part of the safety precautions. Okay, so we're going to begin with the questions. Okay, do you experience any abdominal pain? No. No, that's good. Okay, so um, in the past several days or past weeks, do you experience any nausea, vomiting? No. No. Okay, that's good. Um, do you uh, feel uh, there is there any excessive gas or abdominal fullness? No. No. Okay. So we're going to move on with your urinary tract. So uh, when it comes to your urination, how frequently do you urinate a day? Mm, five times a day. Okay. So five times a day. Okay. So when it comes to urgency, can you control your um, urination? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, as you urinate, uh, how could you describe the color of your uh, urine? Yellowish. Yellowish. Okay. So, um, while you urinate, do you um, do you smell any foul odor? No. No. Okay. So, when it comes to amount, um, is it just normal amount or too much urinate? No more. No more. Just the usual amount. Okay. So, um, as you urinate, um, can you feel any pain in your abdomen part? No. In your genital? No. No. Okay. okay. So, we're going to move on with your past history. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So, um, Mom Casey, do you, uh, do you have any previous abdominal surgery like that? No. No. Trauma injury. No. No. Okay, so any previous abdominal pain? No. Any abdominal medications or treatments? No. No. Okay, so we're going to move on with your family history. So does anyone in your family um, experience any stomach, colon, or liver cancer? No. No. Okay, so um, does any member of the family experience abdominal pain? No. No. How about appendicitis? No. No. So when it comes to your lifestyle, Mom Casey, um, and health practices, uh, what is the food and drink you took with the past 24 hours? I only eat rice and soup and water. Okay, so that's it? That's all? Yes. Okay. Rice, soup, and water. Okay. This is for breakfast? Yes. Okay. So, do you have any medications? No. No. Um, how about your fluid intake? How many glasses do you drink a day? Eight times. Eight glasses a day. So, oh. Um, how about when it comes to exercise, ma'am? Do you exercise? Sometimes. Okay, sometimes. So, that's the end of the questioning. So, um, thank you for your cooperation and honesty, ma'am. So, the next thing we're going to do is um, we'll make your position. I, I'll guide you to, pos to, uh, to get into your position, okay? Is that okay with you? Yes. So, now that the patient is already in the right position, we can now um, start our assessment or examination in the abdominal part of the patient. Uh, to start our assessment or examination, we will begin with inspection. So, 
Um, to begin with, um, I will ask the patient if I could um, take her shirt up. Okay? So, mom, can I take your shirt up to have a clear visualization in your abdomen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, in inspecting the abdomen of the client, we will begin to inspect for the color. Okay, so the color of the abdomen part of the patient or the client is match matches the color of uh, the of her color in the different areas of the body. Uh, next, um, in the skin, I can see no lesions, um, no scars. Uh, okay, that could uh, that could lead to any discomfort. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna inspect is for the um, the abdomen, uh, the umbilicus part. Okay, so the location of the umbilicus is normal, which is in the midline of the abdomen. Uh, the location is right, normal. The color matches the uh, the color in the other part of the abdomen, which is normal. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna inspect is for um, if there are any bulges or masses. So as I can see, there are no bulges in the abdomen part. Uh, there are no uh, there are no masses, okay, which is uh, right. So the next thing we're gonna inspect is for the respiratory movement. Okay, so the respiratory movement is normal because as she inhale and exhale, I can see that there is a, an up and a down movement in the abdomen. So the next thing is for the aortic pulsations. Okay, it's also normal. And the peristaltic wave is also normal. Okay, so uh, the last thing we're going to inspect is if there are any enlarged uh, organs, which is I could I could not visualize it well. Um, there are no explicit enlargement of the organs, which is normal. Okay, so for the next thing we're going to do is the auscultation. In auscultating the client's abdomen, we have to use the stethoscope. Okay, so um, to begin with, I will start with the right lower quadrant of the abdomen of the patient or the client. So I will uh, auscultate all four quadrants, the right lower quadrant, the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. Um, and I should auscultate them in a clockwise manner. Okay. Um, this is to check or to auscultate the um, the bowel sounds of the patient if there are the intensity, the pitch, and if there are any abnormalities. Okay, so I'll start with the right lower quadrant, which is right below the umbilicus. Okay, using the diaphragm of my stethoscope. Okay, good. Right upper quadrant, okay. the left upper quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. Okay. Um, as I auscultate the uh, four quadrants of the abdomen of the patient or the client, I didn't hear any abnormality in the bubble sounds, which is normal. So the last thing we're going to auscultate is the uh, we're going to auscultate for any vascular sounds in the client's or the patient's abdominal part. So we're going to start with the aorta, which is just uh, right above the umbilicus part. Okay, so we're going to listen using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, okay, as well as in the bell. So the aorta branch out into renal, iliac, and femoral artery. So we're going to auscultate them as well. Okay, so we're going to start with the renal, uh, renal artery. Okay, inspect both sides using the diaphragm and the bell. Next is for the femoral artery, which is located here. Okay, diaphragm and the bell. Okay, the next side. Okay. And lastly, 
As I also take those areas of the abdominal part of the client or the patient, I heard no sounds or uh, no abnormalities in the uh, vascular sounds, which is normal. After auscultation, we are going to percuss the abdominal part of the, um, the client or the patient. So we're gonna uh, percuss first the liver border. So we're gonna um, use the percuss percussion technique, which is I will use I will put my uh, non-dominant hand on the dominant part of the patient or the client, and I will um, use my dominant hand to um, like this to do this um, in an upward manner so from tympanic sound we should hear the dullness okay as we go along the upward okay, okay so this is where the dullness um sound appears so we're going to mark that okay then after that we're going to um, percuss um, in a downward manner. Okay, from here. Okay, from uh, the long resonance, it should uh, sound, uh, we should hear a dull sound over here. Okay, so this part is the liver border of the client. This is the liver border of the client. So since we have marked the uh, liver border of the client or the patient, we should measure it. Um, okay, so the normal measurement is um, from the mid sagittal uh, line, it should be 4 to 8 centimeters, and from the right, it should be 6 to 12 centimeters. Okay, so we're gonna measure it now. Okay, lands on. Uh, as I measure the uh, liver border of the client, it is normal because it is um, uh, it is on the range of the normal border lines of the liver. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to perform the scratch test on the patient or the client. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll, I'll be doing the stethoscope. Okay, so I'll place. The stethoscope here in the mid middle part of the abdomen. Okay. Then I'll scratch the abdomen upward. So the uh, I hear the sound of the scratching here. Okay. Here. Okay. This means that the uh, I already reached the liver of liver part of the patient. Okay. So, yeah, as I listen to the, uh, to, to the, um, to the part of the patient, this part of the client or the patient, um, I hear the uh, significantly increasing of the sound of the scratching, which means um, that this area is the area of the liver of the patient. What we're gonna do is where we're going to percuss the spleen of the patient or the client. So before that, we will um, change the position of the client or the patient. So, ma'am, can we can you change the position in a sideline position to your right? Okay. That assist the patient in um, being in the sideline position. Okay. So the spleen is located in the tenth rib. Okay. So we're going to look that in the mid sagittal. Okay. So here, going to palpate this. I, I mean, to percuss this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the sound is tympanic. So I'll ask the patient, can you deep uh, breath, ma'am? Okay. okay, that's good. 
Okay, so now go back to your position. Okay. So um, the sound of the spleen of the patient or the client is tympanic, and um, it does not uh, change um, while she breathes in or deep breath. So um, it means that there are no enlargement in the spleen. The next thing we're going to do is the ascites. Okay, so we'll perform this uh, first in the supine position. Okay, so gonna palpate this up to the mid clavicular right? Okay, as we here for any tympanic or dullness. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the patient in the side lying position. Okay, ma'am. This is here. Okay, side lying. And then uh, begin percussing again. So, um, aside this, this is the change of margin in uh, dullness because uh, the acidic fluid um, is gradually shifting. Last thing for percussion is we have to uh, blunt percuss the kidneys, which is located at the back of the patient or the client. Okay, so I, uh, the position of the patient is a sitting position. Okay, so I will place my non-dominant hand here in the uh, in the vertebral column, the posterior vertebral column, and then uh, using my dominant hand, I will um, uh, just uh, tug here. Okay, then on the other side, I will feel the posterior vertebral column as well, and then put a tug there. Um, uh, we will know if there are no um, kidney uh, discomfort or disability when the patient or the client didn't feel any pain, which is normal. If the client or patient feel pain, so there is something wrong in the kidneys of the patient. For the next thing we're going to do is to palpate the abdomen of the patient or the client. So we'll start with light palpation. Okay, so we're going to depress the skin of the patient in the abdomen part um, for about 1 to 5 I uh, 1.5 centimeters uh, deep okay? so uh, we can use a rotating manner to have a um, visualization in the uh, what's going on inside okay so we have to take note for any um, tenderness or masses in uh, all the quadrants of the the abdomen of the patient. Okay. So uh, I don't sense any uh, tenderness or masses in the uh, no, in the abdomen part of the patient. So we're going to proceed with the um, deep palpation. Okay. So in this time, in this uh, this scenario, we're going to depress the skin of the patient five to seven point five centimeters deep. Okay. Using my fingertips and a rotating motion okay, in all quadrants as well. Okay. We have to look for uh, tenderness, masses, or enlargement of um, the organs of the patient or the client. Okay. So, since I have no, um, I don't uh, palpate any uh, enlargement of the organs or masses in the um, a dominant part of the patient, so it's normal. So the next thing is we're uh, gonna take a look. Uh, we're gonna palpate the umbilicus part, okay? So which looks normal. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to palpate the liver of the patient or the client. So I will put my uh, non-dominant or the left 
my left hand under the um, the patient's location of the kidney. Okay, so in my dominant hand, I will place it here in the outer border of the liver where I um, where I marked a while ago. Then facing uh, face uh, the my hand should be facing um, to the patient's neck, uh, patient's face. Okay, so I will instruct my patient to inhale deeply. Okay, inhale deeply. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, okay, so exhale. So, I already palpate the liver of the patient. So, um, the liver's border is smooth, which is normal. So, um, I don't feel any abnormality in the, um, the patient's liver. So, um, it means that she has a normal liver. So for the next thing we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna hook the liver of the patient. So I will, uh, I will be here, the right, uh, right side of the patient. So facing hip, uh, her feet. Then I will place my hand here, um, my fingertips, and I will move my fingertips up and down, uh, up and in and out, please, as I instruct the patient to inhale it. So can you please inhale with me? Okay. So exhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay. So um, I could um, I already hook the liver. So um, as I hook it, I feel that the uh, liver is smooth and in the right place. So um, it is normal. Next thing we're gonna palpate is the spleen of the client or the patient. Okay. So I will um, place my hand here at the uh, at the um, 7 to 10 intercostal space of the client. Um, okay, so, and I will palpate here. You can see my dominant hand. Okay, please inhale deeply. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. So, the normal spleen should, the, should, it, should not be palpable because um, if the spleen is palpable, it means that the organ is um, enlarging. So, um, for, uh, in this case, in her case, so her spleen is not palpable, which is normal. So, the next thing we're going to palpate is the aorta of the patient. So, um, the aorta should be uh, 3 centimeters. Um, so, it should be, so, um, as I can palpate, so the aorta of the patient, um, you can measure it, okay. So the aorta of the patient is 3 centimeters, uh, which is normal. Then, um, the last thing we're going to palpate is the kidney of the patient. Okay. I will place my hand in the location of the kidney, okay, my non-dominant hand at the back, and then my dominant hand at the, um, okay, here, okay part. So, I will instruct the patient to inhale deep. Inhale deep. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So, yeah, I, uh, as I palpate the part of the kidney, um, there are no enlargement, um, there are no tenderness, which, it, which made it normal. So, um, this uh, following test uh, are tests for appendicitis. Okay, so we'll start with the iliopsoas test. Okay, so in a supine position, I will instruct my patient or my client to raise his left um, leg, but I'll put, I'll put the pressure here um, to see if there are any um, pain in the abdominal part. Okay, so can you please raise your leg, right leg? Okay, first. Okay. Down and then your right leg go. Okay, so do you feel any uh, pain in your abdominal part? No. Here, do you feel feel pain here? No. As you raise your leg? No. no. Okay. So she uh, she doesn't feel any pain. So it is a good indication that she might not have a appendicitis. The next thing we're going to do is the rebound uh, tenderness. 
Okay, so um, in a supine position, I will uh, place my um, hands here in the uh, right lower quadrant of the abdominal part of the patient. So, okay, please inhale. Okay. I will um, lift this um, for about 4 centimeters, then release it. Exhale. So, um, uh, when I um, push uh, this down, um, do you feel any pain? No. While releasing? No. So, um, the patient, uh, the client does not feel any pain while I push it down and when I release it, uh, she does not feel any pain as well. So, that, um, that means that um, she, uh, it is a good possibility, there is a great possibility that she has no appendicitis. Next test we're going to perform for appendicitis is the wrong sign. Okay, so in this, uh, this time, um, I will, um, push, um, inward, uh, my hands in the lower, uh, left lower quadrant, um, to see if there are any pain in the right, um, lower quadrant, okay? So, yeah, do you feel pain? No. Okay, when I release it, do you feel pain? No. So, um, that is a good indication that um, she has no pain here in the um, in this part. So, it is a good indication that she is uh, she has no um, discomfort or appendicitis. And for the last test, um, we're going to do the obturator sign. So, I'm going to raise um, the right leg of the client here, 90 degrees. Okay. So, um, I will place um, her um, legs or ankles um, like this. Uh, do you feel any pain? No. Okay. So, the client feels no pain. Um, that is why um, uh, it is a good indication that the appendix is healthy and there are no discomfort um, in that part. So, it is all normal. Lastly, we have to document all the findings we've gathered, whether it is normal or abnormal findings, and then don't forget to wash our hands before leaving the room.